we're going to get... Sorry. Oh, that all becomes <laughs> so official. Yay. Okay. All right. So it is my job to, first of all, thank the many people who worked really hard through many meetings to put this together and to highlight that here are our goals for the day. Um, I think they're really important goals and we are committed to them. The first one is to create a shared understanding of what meta majors are and or are not. And I know I'm using the word meta majors and some people may say, but wait a minute, we haven't agreed what to call it. That is true for now. We'll just call these uh, meta majors and then as a campus, we'll decide what to call these things. The second thing is to create a shared understanding of the benefits of having meta majors for, for the campus and particularly for our students. And we'll be hearing from students directly. And the third one, I think it's important and it's something that we have learned through the pathways work. Clarity is essential. We wanted to have a clear understanding of what it is that we are going to do at today's activity, and more importantly, what is to follow with a timeline and next steps for completion of the meta majors by the end of the spring 2021. And I know Ian Duckles is going to, at the very end of the day, which is two and a half hours together, super exciting, share with us all those next steps. So lots of work to do, but we are getting there to the point that we are going to look at our degrees and certificates and got how to group them into for what we now call meta majors. So welcome again. I don't see my, uh, I see bienvenida. Oh, ben, ben, good, good. There we go. We are okay. It says there in Catalan, welcome. So I am okay. Tony, you're okay. All right, Maritza, you got the next slide. Thank you. Wonderful. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all hopped up on some good coffee and are ready to really dive into our agenda today. Um, so basically, we're going to be dividing this day into two separate halves. Um, I will be your timekeeper as well. So I will ensure that we stay on track. So you may hear me nudge or uh, politely uh, ask you to move things along if we tend to get off schedule. Um, but this just covers sort of some of the items that we're going to be covering. So as you can see, we have a lot to cover. We're so excited that you're here to collaborate with us um, to provide input, data, information, um, so that we can take that information and move forward. The first half will be about an hour and 10 minutes, give or take a few minutes. We'll have a 10 minute break, and then we'll move into our second half, which is really going to be when you'll be diving into working um, with a facilitator in small groups um, to really um, discuss sort of these broader topics that we've been covering um, in both halves. Next slide, please, Tony. So just to cover today, um, today's planners and presenters, Isabel mentioned, um, you know, giving thanks to those who have been a part of our planning. Um, so both Cynthia Rico and Ian Duckles, who are the co lead for the guided majors and mapping work group have invested a lot of time in addition to um, the pathways leadership team, which includes Tony Howard and myself, as well as Isabel. Um, and we also are going to be hearing from our Mesa Pathways fellows um, a little bit later to really um, provide you with some student voices that will inform our next steps moving forward. I'll hand it over to Tony. Thank you, Marisa. So <clears throat> as all um, pathways work, equity work, um, a lot of the work that we do um, is data informed, right? And we, and we ground um, ourselves in data. Um, navigating the Mesa was a data project that our wonderful IE team, pictured down at the bottom, um, actually uh, um, presented um, almost two years ago now, March 2019. Um, but the goal of the, <clears throat> excuse me, of this particular research project um, was uh, twofold. First, they did focus groups with about 150 students and then used the themes from the focus groups to create a survey that they also sent to students. And the idea of uh, the questions and the focus, if you will, of the study was on how students navigated MESA's majors degrees and, and course scheduling. Um, I've only pulled a few of the data elements that is particular to, um, to the idea of meta majors. Um, so move forward. 
Um, so this is the focus group participants, a breakdown of um, their ethnicity as well as gender. And um, I'm in, through a, each of these slides, I've kind of just highlighted some of the things that are, again, particular to the conversation today. Um, and I do have a, a wrap up summary at the end. So, you know, you don't have to remember everything right now. Um, but this was um, the, the students who were involved in the focus group. And as we're talking about majors, um, it is noteworthy that two thirds of the students in the focus group reported that they had not changed their major. Now students were, at, obviously you can see 25% were in their first two terms. So students were across the board here on how many units they had taken and how long they had been at Mesa um, at the time of this study. And a breakdown, if you will, of the survey respondents. Um, and, and this one went by age group as well. And you can see, hopefully it is rather representative of our campus, females being a little bit high. Um, if you've done any research, you know that females tend to respond to surveys more than males, but otherwise kind of representative, pretty representative of our campus. So the first thing I wanna point out is um, with this, so N is 364, so that was the survey respondents. Um, and this was the education objective of those survey respondents on their application. You're going to see later that on the apply, students are required to pick a selection of 15 different educational goals. Um, and so this particular is our students at that time. This is what they had chosen on their application. Um, so note the largest, of course, is the 44% down at the bottom. Those are students who are seeking a bachelor's degree after completing an associate's. Um, we have the 12% that are undecided, right? That's something that we need to, to consider. Um, how do we get information to those students? Um, but if you'd see the top, the 44%, the 13% new career preparation means students who are returning to school and changing um, their career aspirations. Um, a bachelor's without completing associates, those are our transfer students, those are the 44%. So how do we reach those 10%? 10, 10 um, you have the 5% that are searching for an associate's degree without transfer, and the 2% that are looking for a, a vocational certificate or degree without transfer. So from the focus group themes, some of the questions that were asked, and again, I'm highlighting the big one. So the first question, what information did you use to choose your major? The themes that came out of the focus groups is um, a career. They were looking for what career they wanted, their experience in some field, a passion or an interest, um, exploration, the inf that's what information they used to choose their major, or learning growth, skill development, um, these are the themes that came out of the focus group. And what this particular study did, again, was took the themes that came out of the focus group and created a survey from them. So what you'll see is, I'm sorry, and here's some comments from students. Um, career, what, what we took as a career theme is I needed a job with a decent income potential. Um, experience in the field, I had the opportunity to go for supervisor but needed more education. Okay, uh, those, we sometimes we call those skill builders, people who are trying, who are coming back to school to um, better themselves in the career they're already in. Um, passion or interest, I decided to follow my passion, which is writing. Um, and learning growth skill development, I just want, I want to feel challenged. And that's how I chose my major. So then the survey question that followed was, which of the following was the most important factor? So again, we heard from the focus groups, here were some themes coming out. Now tell us what was the most important factor. Uh, Jennifer, I just see your comment real fast. This was in 2019. So this was presented um, March of 2019. Uh, the most important factor, notice alignment with passion and interest. As we talk about majors, you will see that some of the examples are called areas of interest, interest areas, right? How do we connect your passions and your interests to a major or to an educational goal and or and an educational goal? 21% um, future income expectations, okay? That was most important is that I wanted to make some money. Um, availability of future job in the field. 
um, seeking career growth or advancement, right? So those were the most important factors. And even though family and friends is, it was in there, it was a very small percentage that chose this as a, um, the most important factor in choosing their major or educational goal. <clears throat> I also thought this was important as we talk about the idea of meta majors. How did you first learn about your major course of interest? 31% learned about their major course of interest by the internet. So you're going to see a couple examples of um, later, a couple examples of campuses that, um, uh, that have really taken their idea of meta majors and made some really dynamic changes onto their website and how students get the information about the different majors, the different um, uh, patterns, course taking patterns and things like that that they could use on their website, on their internet. Um, <clears throat> And then you can see the other uh, ideas there. Noteworthy, 10% said they did hear about their, first learn about their major course of interest from a counselor. Um, I will comment on that a little bit more as well. So what, of that data, what is the connection to meta majors in general and to our conversation today? So as Marisa said, um, you will be getting involved and have a chance to participate and help us start shaping this idea of meta majors for MESA and for our MESA students. And so just some things that we want you to keep in mind as um, you're thinking about what this can and should look like for MESA. Uh, for two thirds of the students that didn't change their major, how do we assure that they are on the most efficient and effective path for that major? And I think we need to follow up and ask, did they actually graduate with that major? Right. We've also talked about um, uh, the idea of meta majors and things like that. We've, or I'm sorry, the idea of data. We've also talked about the number of units and how long it has taken our students to to complete their degrees. And so, um, how do we how do we make things efficient? How do we make it effective? Right. How do we make it excellent for the students? For the one third that did that did not change. I'm sorry. I missed. Oh, never mind. Ah, rewind. For the one third that did change their major, <laughs> um, how do we assure that their change of major costs them the least amount of time in units? So if they change their major, were they still, was their major similar? And if so, how much time and units were lost and how do we minimize that for the students? 74% of the students surveyed indicated a degree certificate transfer educational application. So that one that had the 44% the said they wanted a bachelor's after achieving an associate, I added together all the categories that lead to degree certificate or transfer. That's a completion of a program, right? Of a whole program, whatever that program is. So how do we assure these students have all the pertinent information needed to achieve these goals with both equity and excellence? 46% of students surveyed said the most important factor in choosing a major is based on their passion or interest. How do we help students identify their interests and turn them into a career interest and thus an appropriate major? How do we connect those two together? Only 10% of students surveyed said they first learned of their major from a counselor. So how do we provide information for students particularly through the internet that is clear, concise, and reliable before they visit a counselor. So it's just some things to think about um, as, we're go as we keep going through this conversation and later today when you're in breakout rooms and discussing, right? Always keeping the data in mind as we, um, as we move forward. I'm going to turn it over to Ian and I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen. Ian? Hello. Thank you. So yeah, uh, my work group, uh, we spent a lot of time working on what we've called a kind of student goals approach to uh, sorting students. And so I wanted to talk a bit about how that, because a lot of you have maybe heard us talk about this in Academic Senate or chairs or various other groups. And so I wanted to talk about how that work connects up 
with what we're doing today in connection with meta majors. And to do that, I'm gonna turn things over to two members of our work group, uh, Dina Miyoshi and Ryan Mangaluzo, who are gonna kind of walk us through that student goals approach that we've been talking about, as well as the way that, that connects to this uh, discussion that we're having today about meta majors. So I will turn it over to them. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Good morning. Um, okay. Can we see that? Or... Yeah, it's good. Um, all right, thank you first to everyone for um, giving uh, your time to us today. And thank you to the MBC for, for giving our great group an opportunity to, to share this all with you. Um, so uh, as you heard mentioned a little bit earlier, um, when students uh, apply through Mesa, uh, to Mesa, they're put through the CCC apply thing. And we thought that that would be a good starting point to take you through the work we've kind of done so you understand its logic and how it articulates with everything else. Um, so there's this piece uh, on their website that kind of helps understand the direction of thing of, of, of this initiative. Uh, notice at the bottom of the text there, student services are going to help students choose their path and stay on it. And is there um, anything that, that, that um, anything more that could express what the guided pathways initiative is trying to do? I don't think so. But concomitantly, um, there needs to be a commitment to a diverse array of educational programs and uh, also a broad range of student goals. Um, and uh, the way that CCC Apply does that is kind of cacophonous. Uh, Dean, if you want to share the next slide. Um, so <laughs> CCC Apply puts students into one of 15 categories. And I'm not sure um, how intuitive these categorizations are to students. Um, and I can't imagine also for counseling um, dealing with all of these um, different designations. So one of the first things that we did um, was try to distill all this down into more meaningful uh, categorizations. Uh, so you can see that there are six of them, transfer, degree, career, explore, lifelong learning, and civic engagement. Um, Dina, you wanna take us through those a little bit? And I think that uh, one thing to note is that uh, we we did do some we also did some some focus groups with uh, with students uh, to get their feedback on um, on these different goals if there was you know as far as the what they were called as far as that they made sense that if as far as just just what uh, they uh, they thought of them uh, and so we are we finished those focus groups uh, at the end of fall and are in the process of uh, looking at that, uh, that data. So just a brief kind of explanation of, of each of those in trying to pull from uh, those uh, 15 goals in the CCC apply. Uh, this also connects to what you saw earlier with, with Tony's, uh, what Tony was explaining with the different categories um, and the percentages in those different categories. Um, so one of the things that um, our inquiry group is really interested in in learning um, is uh, how Mesa's campus is already helping students uh, achieve their goals, no matter which of these goals there are, um, and um, additionally, what more they might do or want to do. So here we're looking at a couple different um, questions. So one of them is really how are how can the student and our instructional support services in the different areas uh, at Mesa address and facilitate um, these goals? And then the other question pertains more to the programs, the certificates, the degrees, even some of the courses, how might they uh, address and facilitate these goals? So uh, you know, these are two questions that um, certainly pertain to, uh, to different, to, all, to a lot of the different things that uh, we do at Mesa. Uh, and this really is a part where uh, we would need uh, everyone 
to uh, try and help answer these questions. And some of these will be addressed uh, you know, as we move forward into the next activities later, later this morning. Uh, so real quick, uh, go ahead, Dina, sorry. Go ahead, no, go ahead. Um, one of the things I would add about these six categories, um, one of the big benefits of them is in building something for students who are two year full time, know their major on the first day. Um, we can't create something that other types of students can't use. Um, and the benefit of this as well is it really is an equity issue, right? It's picking up these other goals, these other students, seeing them, seeing them in our structures and our intent, um, which I think is a very healthy thing and, and totally in line with Mesa's overall drive. So just to try to tie it all together, as far as, as looking at uh, these goals, looking at uh, the things we'll focus on today as far as a uh, meta majors or area of interest, uh, looking at uh, the work that uh, a lot of the campus has already done on um, the mapping. Uh, this slide focuses on how uh, you know, all of those things fit together um, and uh, kind of link to each other. And one thing to note about this slide I mean, is hard to fit everything in, in a way that uh, could highlight everything. Uh, it's really not meant to be a, a linear sort of thing, uh, but uh, you know, so so I just just wanted to mention mention that because you, you really don't have to move in a linear fashion through it. All right, so here we're bringing in these two questions that we addressed on the uh, on the last slide, and so if we focus on a, the question pertaining to student and instructional support services. If we're looking at, at uh, how this might fit with all of uh, the different goals and just take just take the transfer oriented uh, student services and support, just as an example, uh, I think one of the things to think about as we are answering uh, this question throughout the semester is, you know, what kinds of support services does Mesa have that would fit this particular goal? Um, so if we take something like something like financial aid. I mean, I think that there are certain things that, that uh, fit with this goal that may differ uh, from, from uh, some of the, the other goals uh, as far as the types of, of things that must be addressed, the types of, of uh, aid that is available. Um, and, and, and so then kind of doing this uh, across the board, looking at, at, uh, at all the different services that uh, we have and how might uh, students be using these differently. I, I think another thing to think about at, at this point is that, you know, as Tony said, you know, a lot of our, our students, they're, they're getting a lot of their information even before they talk to anybody. So, you know, how might some of these things be displayed, um, you know, via the internet or, uh, you know, what kind of information might they get uh, while they are just exploring? Uh, this also could be an area where they are looking at uh, you know, different areas of interest or different um, maps just to see what we have to, uh, to offer. So uh, I think as we're answering this question, uh, you know, really what kinds of things in, in the different areas that might fit these uh, goals. Did I miss yeah, anything, ahead. Ryan? Anything else? No, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then the second question, really, that focuses on our certificates, certificates, degrees, and even some courses. Uh, this is would be where we're looking at those areas of interest and thinking about them in the context of these different goals. I think as you're looking at the goals, they also you also will see some overlap with uh, when uh, we're talking later about. Um, the different criteria that are used to kind of organize those areas of interest. And so I think it's important to, for us to be able to kind of look back to these goals and think about where our different programs that, and different aspects of our programs fit with uh, these different goals as we're looking at trying to organize these, these areas of uh, interest. The other component then would be uh, all of those support services that are more directly tied to those areas of interest. Uh, so this would be, uh, you know, 
student services instructional support that I know we have a lot of at Mesa, uh, your, your counseling, and then even in the, you know, the program or faculty specific sorts of guidance that can be given um, as we're looking to uh, try and help students kind of continue uh, towards their uh, whatever goal they have. Um, I'll just add at this point for both that initial round of student services and support and counseling and the second round that's even more tailored. Um, it isn't, uh, no one in the inquiry group knows what those things look like for your program, for your service. Uh, it's our strong belief that you're already doing this in some fashion, which is why we're asking you to tell us um, how you particularly do these things um, so, so that uh, it can be more structured and more shared and, and a more powerful um, effort towards these different types of students. And so then finally, you know, we're looking at uh, maybe some of the specific maps that were created. I mean, this would also be a point at which, uh, you know, students could, could be following those maps and uh, getting the guidance they need to, to get to their, uh, you know, goal, whatever it is that uh, trying to uh, achieve. <clears throat> And I think one thing to uh, know, and maybe Ryan, you want to expand on this a bit more, is that larger star uh, over here uh, on the side, on the right side at the bottom. Yeah, um, sure. So you can kind of see, right, the, the transfer-oriented student, we're hoping that they transfer. And the degree-oriented student, we hope they achieve a degree, right? Those are the goals. But in seeing explorers and lifelong learners and students who want to increase and understand what it means to be civically engaged, especially in the current state of our nation, um, by seeing those other students, um, it enables us to uh, take an attempt at hopefully filtering them back uh, into becoming a transfer degree or career um, oriented student, as opposed to them just falling through the cracks or bouncing off um, our institution. And um, I think, yeah, go ahead. I think just to, to piggyback on that, you're looking at lifelong learning or civic engagement. I mean, those are things that that uh, sometimes we think, okay, they, they really aren't interested in a degree or a certificate. But I think that with some of the, the things that uh, our different programs are innovating and coming up with, especially on the certificate end, and with the, the current climate and what it, you know is is kind of the focus in this country, especially uh, in the past you know, year or, or so, uh, I think that some of these certificates that we offer it could actually, in the end, uh, you know, people might be interested in those, even if they're starting out in those right to uh, uh, goal sort of categories, so. Uh, just a, a couple of things, a point of clarification, what we're calling areas of interest can be called meta majors, will be called meta majors as well. Uh, it's like, as you heard earlier, it's up to Mesa to decide. I didn't want to create a confusion as if we were talking about something else. But as we flow through the rest of the day and you begin to think about what um, areas of interest are going to look like at Mesa, uh, there's a lot of different logic you can use. Obviously, you can see here that um, the areas of interest need to uh, be well coordinated with what the mapping is doing. Um, but we're also asking you to think about how the areas of interest and how they're constructed and how they articulate with everything else, um, how that also impacts the different types of students and this goal-oriented approach. It should all really mesh and flow one into the other. All right, so I'll, I think we're finished. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen, but thanks very much for uh, you know, giving us the opportunity to uh, share what we have done in our work group. Yes, and come to our mixers. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So there will be more on the mixers later. Isabel, this is yours. Well, thank you very much. And I appreciate everybody's presentation so far. Um, I think I just wanted to wrap this up to put it all together or in context, right? We've been talking about working with a sort of two-pronged approach. The first approach is the educational goal. And I refer to that as door one, uh, matching with CCC apply. And the second uh, door really opens to meta majors, meta majors understood 
in terms of degrees and certificates grouped together by a criteria that we can decide. And that's what the second more hands-on part of the uh, meeting today is about, right? What criteria? Is it gonna be career that, you know, putting together majors that, uh, degrees that lead to the to similar careers? Is it by major prep in common? And I'm giving away too much for part two, so stay tuned. But anyway, that's what we are going to decide. And um, I, I just want to highlight a couple of the points that were mentioned before. I think what you saw in that, it looked like a really uh, complex, in a sense, it had a lot of information slide that Dina and Ryan had. But what we are talking really about is the framework for a lot of the pathways work. Normally this meta major stuff comes at the beginning and then around it, you build the rest of, of the structure. So when Ryan was talking about tailoring services, to the specific needs of students. That, this is all what Pathways is all about. Not every student who enters MESA has the same needs. And uh, so that is uh, one approach. The other thing is capacity, right? Another thing that you saw on that slide is that we are going to provide information to students. And not every student, that's the equity piece here. We often sort of provide everything to everybody and in a sense, fail to provide students um, who need more information or need it in different ways or need services, fail to do that as an institution because we don't have that sort of very tailored approach. So it's a question of capacity. Can every student then go and meet with a counselor? And if that is not possible, step one, how can we provide the information in a variety of ways? Um, and also, I think another important thing that Ryan mentioned is that educational goals do and do change, right? And they should. E educational goals should change and we should do our very best to help students achieve their educational goals by providing them widespread information as to what they could do. In other words, it's not that this is your educational goal and this is your path and this is your box and you stay there forever. That is not the way this is going to work. An educational goal can and should uh, change. For example, students who come and say, I just wanna learn the newest computer science uh, technology because my employer is gonna give me um, a raise, right? It's for job related reasons. Then that student can earn a certificate and eventually earn a degree that would advance the student's career even more. And, and financial, uh, uh, you know, well being of our students is also a social justice issue. So, again, you saw the framework as it's developing, it has the educational goals, and then students walk into the meta majors. Uh, how we combine our degrees and certificates using criteria that we are going to agree on and develop. And that's what we are doing today. Yay. Okay, next. And that's Howard. Oh, so sorry about that. So we are having a little computer malfunction. So we're going to be talking uh, here now about uh, benefits and concerns of um, meta majors, and um, I wanted to give you a context. And I think this this definition that we're using from uh, the Academic Senate of California Community College really kind of helps give a context and, and maybe a little clarification. So I'd like to read it to you, and so that we can frame this uh, upcoming conversation. So a area of interest or meta major or whatever we decide to call it is a collection of academic programs. So it's not just one, it's a collection and it leads to related occupations and that there were some comments in the chat um, discussing that, that have either similar learning objectives, outcomes, contents and resources. Programs within a meta major share some requirements which allows for early exploration as students may enroll in a broad field of interest without collecting excess units. Then many uh, colleges have chosen to use local terms instead of meta majors, and we'll be talking about this today. Areas of interest, focus areas, uh, 
career and learning pathways. Uh, and a meta major is not a major. It is simply a tool to organize and allow students um, to give them information so that they can declare a specific major and qualify for financial aid. Tony, I think this is yours. This is mine. So actually, this is the groups. You get to play, finally, <laughs> and get involved. So we have a Jamboard set up for you. Um, if you're not sure what a Jamboard is, it's kind of like Google Slides, a little bit more fun. Um, and I will bring the Jamboard up. Marisa has put the link in the chat, so you should be able to click right on that. I am going to exit this and show you the Jamboard, or I'm not, there it is. And so when you get into the Jamboard, oh look, 27 of you popping in already. So up on top, you can change, they're called frames here. You can call them slides or pages, whatever you'd like. The front is what um, is the definition that Howard just, um, just explained to you and read to you. So if you click to the next page, what we want you to do is grab sticky notes over here on the side on the left, if you grab a sticky note. A benefit of having a major, I'm gonna put the best word on the earth. Um, and then if you hit save, it pops up as a, as a sticky note. And so you can write, it doesn't have to be one word. Uh-oh, we have too many people participating. Oh no. Okay, let's do this. Those that are in, get your sticky notes in and then get out. So those, <laughs> I didn't realize there was a limit on people. I apologize about that. Um, yeah, I am sorry about that. So if those that are in, if you can quickly, um, you guys are creating pages, just sticky note on here. And the second one would be concerns. If you have concerns with having meta majors, sticky note on the third page. There you go. People are starting to sticky note. And I'm sorry about the amount of people. I was not aware of that or else I would have done it a different way. So in order to allow everybody to um, participate, if you can get your sticky notes in and then exit the Jamboard and those that aren't in, if you can keep trying to get in um, and we will, we will do it that way. And I apologize for not knowing that ahead of time. And we're going to give you about five to six minutes to get these in. We'll provide you with some ambient move jazz to really fuel your brilliant ideas. Rachel, thank you for the suggestion. I made a copy, a new one that, um, and I put the link in the, oh no, I did it, I did it. Let's do it this way. Um, a new link for a new Jamboard. So more of you can participate on a separate one.
Now that everyone's relaxed and feeling jazzy, uh, <laughs> maybe just wind down with your final comments, contributions, take some deep breaths, stand up and stretch if you need to. Lots of really good stuff here. I'm seeing some definite themes. Tony, are you moving them to themes? I appreciate I, that. Thank I, you. I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> I think someone else is moving too. Uh, yeah, that that is a lot and it's hard to read. So themes would be most appreciated for both slides. Uh, on the second slide, I'm doing that. I'm on the on the concerns. I've tried to stack similar themes as much as okay. I can. Thank you, Ian. Okay, so let's do, oh. oh. And if there's anyone who wasn't able to get into the Jamboard for whatever reason, um, feel free to put ideas, either benefits or concerns in the chat and we'll try to get those populated in. Are we ready? Are we on time? Yes, we are. Okay, so who are the benefit analysis people? I believe it's I, Marisa, and Howard. Or if not, I tag you guys. Yes. <laughs> 
That, um, is, that is correct. I will meet. So what are the themes we see? So um, the first column immediately is um, meet students with similar interests and goals. And so there are many of the colleges who have done um, these meta majors have found um, one of the benefits that they chose to group their, their uh, majors was to build this community, um, like a cohort community. And um, students who are in that cohort or in that pathway um, do end up taking sometimes similar courses with each other and you, you build this um, community or this familia and an ability to share ideas and um, have um, a supportive group. And so that's one of the benefits um, that could happen from um, having our, group, our majors um, group. Um, Howard, something else? Uh, one of the things that I uh, saw um, is that the, the fact that we have meta majors are, are front facing. And so that's giving a lot of our students um, many, uh, many research um, studies have said that students get their information for uh, areas of interest or majors uh, from the internet or uh, online types of things. So having this front facing, I think, gives a lot of our students access to information early on. Um, not that it's saying that you have to decide what your major is, but they get, they get to see everything up front and develop questions in that way, uh, have an opportunity to gather information and, and uh, I think that helps lead them into areas of exploration. Marisa? And I think this kind of touches a little bit on what both of you mentioned, but I think really seeing um, a space for um, clear and consistent information. Um, for myself, coming from a four-year campus, which would post a lot of this information at the ready for students to easily access, we recognize that um, as counselors, even we were unable to see every single student. Uh, actually, many of our students will find their own information doing their own research. And so the importance of having um, clear, um, consistent information that is published, that is updated, um, where there's accountability on a regular basis. I'm seeing a lot of clarity, consistency, guidance um, on, on the, the Jamboard. And, and this is good without going, to, um, what's important to say is it provides equity. Um, there, there's truth as a counselor, I, Marisa, and there's several other counselors, um, my peeps on, on, on this webinar, there's truth. Not everyone could um, find their way to see a counselor at times, or they may find us later, um, late in their journey. And I think what's important is be able to provide information that is clear, that is accurate early on and often. Doing college, and I can speak for myself, was hard. I, it took a lot of people, and I've had to speak with other people. I had to use a call, um, the catalog in different ways, um, I, the website. So having these different means of information that is consistent speaks to people how we take in our information and um, knowing that it's there and often and that you know coming to counseling is not the gatekeeper. Um, so it's it's really for me as um, helping students to get to the end goal is where else can they seek out this information um, the other equitable part is is our hope as we develop this whole concept of what pathways means for our campus that we build um, these cohorts with within our communities to also meet with faculty early and often not wait until they get to the classroom but what are the, who are the other faculty that make up these groupings of major? Where can I find them? Who else um, can we send as counselors? Do we send these students to talk about possibilities of their interests, their passion in their career? And so that's one of the benefits we hope um, that they speak with more people and have that access early and often. I'm gonna jump in if that is allowed. Yes. Uh, I'm really uh, enjoying the chat and I hope we record that because there's precious information there. And one of the things that Anne says in one of her latest posting is having accurate human and digital resources. And I think it is important. Really, we are building the framework and trying to provide information from facing uh, on the web, as well as through human capital, the counselors, the faculty, as uh, Cynthia was just saying. 
And, um, you know, and, and also thinking of what are the key strategic points in the student's journey that you need that information. One of the things we do really well is we front load a lot of services. Welcome to, you know, we used to do this when I was faculty as well. I would get a binder, you know, when you have your, your job orientation, everything is in there. And I retained maybe a couple of pages of it. I think trying to figure out that accessibility of information and when it is in the student's journey, that whether it's knowing what a map looks like, what, knowing what a meta major or grouping of degrees and certificate looks like, or knowing what services are available when I need X, Y, Z. That really is the key of Pathways and making it so ever present that the students don't have to do the, the legwork to go find it. That really is the key here. And of course, like I keep saying, not every student needs the same level of information. So also understanding our student population and their specific needs. Thank you for letting me speak to this. Yeah, no problem. I think we need to go to the next slide. Um, oh, there you and go. And I'll hand it off to Ian, Ian. and me. Mm -hmm. Okay, boy, Ian, it, this is hard to read. Yeah, so I, I, I did try to group things. This big cluster here on the right of the screen is the, they're all basically about flexibility, right? Um, students being able to change paths, students being kind of restricted. Uh, connected to that idea of sort of students being forced to uh, uh, go down a path for reasons that may not be uh, particularly equitable. Um, so so that, that's a kind of, I think that, that is the major concern is the lack of flexibility. And certainly that is something that we need to think very carefully about as we design this. Uh, I, I think one issue there is this is where um, the kind of support services that we design around the meta majors are really going to come into play uh, because I think part of what we want those support services to, to uh, present to students are the options that are available. So, you know, obviously, as, as is always the case, counseling is going to play a huge role here. Um, but I think there's also roles for, for other uh, uh, groups on the campus as well. I mean, I think the faculty actually can play a lot of role in sort of helping students uh, realize that there are other options, realize that there are other paths that they can take. But, but I do agree. I mean, that, that is a big issue. And that's one of the big challenges that we're going to need to think about as we um, work through and design these meta majors, that that flexibility uh, is, is going to be a kind of a central issue that we're going to need to think about. Um, there's also kind of related to that uh, above, we've got a bunch that are all about kind of lack of funding, lack of resources. Um, you know, we have limited counselors. Those counselors have a limited capacity. Uh, and, um, you know, we're going to have to figure out a way to, to leverage the resources that we have. Uh, there's also a concern about the, the kind of message that this meta majors framework sends. Uh, this, I think, for me, is partly why I think this kind of goals approach is a really nice idea as a kind of a top level sorting mechanism, because I think it is perhaps a, a touch more welcoming than going straight into meta majors, which is not to say that the meta majors don't play a really important role. But I think if we're kind of have that top level student goals approach, I think that helps avoid this concern that we're sending this message that we're a certificate factory. It, it helps alleviate this concern that non-traditional students, older students, lifelong learners won't feel like Mesa is a place for them. Um, so I think, again, that's one of the benefits of that, uh, of that approach. And again, I see a lot of people in the chat talking about kind of other great resources that are available. Um, uh, you know, there's definitely this concern about some majors getting left out. Uh, related to that too is this concern that it's too, um, uh, 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 focused on kind of, uh, I guess, a, a direct uh, relationship between the major and the career, so that if you're major, you know, if you're in philosophy, for example, right, we don't necessarily lead directly to a specific career, so that's a concern. Uh, but again, I think this is where the kind of support services around these uh, meta majors and these student goals can really kind of play a role in alleviating a lot of these concerns. 
Um, there's also this issue, this sort of cluster to the left on the bottom is all about uh, concerns about students being confused, students not understanding. Um, and that is, again, I think a really legitimate concern that we need to think about. And as we kind of design and work through this, we need to think about how is this information being presented to the students? How are we giving the students the kind of information that they need to effectively sort through uh, the material that's presented to them? Um, I would say that that lack of clarity, I think, is an issue that exists with the current system that we have. Um, so it's not like what we have is, you know, incredibly clear and incredibly straightforward. Uh, and, and so this does give us this, you know, meta majors process as we think through it does give us an opportunity to think about how are things unclear and how can we make them clear? How can we, again, clarify the path for the students to use that kind of guided pathways language? Ian, then that's, I want to- Wait a minute, Cynthia. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Isabel. <laughs> it looks like we had an A student who was able to read the small print. So I, I know we are, Marisa is saying time is flying. I just want to highlight a couple of things. And mainly one of the things that you study, and I think there's a lot of truth to it, there's fear of what we could build. But I think your line of what it is that we have right now as an institution is not necessarily clear. And it's actually not doing a good job at some uh, addressing some of the concerns you have on the board right now, like providing clarity or providing a variety of ways to share information with students. Uh, one other thing that I wanna highlight here is there is a, a, a yellow note somewhere that says programs will be left out. I am sorry. That concern is not realistic, and you will see why it is not realistic once we get to the end of this workshop. Discipline faculty will actually sit together to sort and figure out where their discipline and degrees and certificates go. So um, participate in those um, sorting activities, whatever Ian is going to call them, and, and get your degree and certificate somewhere. That's not just going to happen. We're not going to say we're leaving philosophy or God forbid history, my own discipline out. Those provide uh, uh, fabulous skills and they will be on one of the meta majors. I just wanted to say that. Thanks. Okay, Cynthia, then, you have the last. I think just really quickly to add to that, you know, there was this concern about this kind of lack of, of support interest from the faculty, getting faculty buy-in and things like that. And, uh, you know, I mean, I think Isabel, exactly what you said relates to that, you know, we are going to provide lots of, I mean, this is an opportunity for faculty participation. Uh, we're going to be providing, as we'll talk later, a lot of opportunities. And, and I would just hope that, um, you know, faculty would participate because, I mean, this this is something that's happening. Um, and, and, you know, we need your voices, you, the faculty, and all of the other members of the campus community, you know, we need your voices to help us design this in a way that's going to work for everyone. And so I would really just encourage you to, to please, um, you know, participate in these opportunities. I'm speaking to the choir here because everyone signed up for this, but, um, you know, do encourage your colleagues uh, to participate as well, because we, we need to hear those voices. We need to hear those concerns and we need to design something that's going to work for everyone. I'm good. I passed. So we'll go ahead. Time is going quick. Thank you, Tony, for advancing the slides. So uh, to further add to and inform this discussion, we wanted to get the opportunity to not only introduce you to some of our wonderfully fabulous Mesa Pathways fellows, uh, but give them the opportunity to also contribute to this discussion. Um, we can all agree that, of course, hearing directly from our students and hearing the voices of students um, is really critical in moving this work forward. And so we had reached out to our fellows just to give them a heads up as to what we are going to be discussing today, but also to really um, encourage them to share with the larger group um, what their responses to these questions um, are or would be. So um, to enable everyone to hopefully get a chance to speak, um, for the fellows, I'm going to pose uh, these questions one by one to you. 
If you're able to use the raise hand feature, I know that um, it's a little bit difficult sometimes for me to keep up with all the wonderful hands coming up um, on Zoom. So if you do have a response, please feel free to raise your hand and I will call on you. Um, feel free to unmute yourself uh, and share your response. Unfortunately, I know we, we have a limited amount of time, so we probably won't be able to hear everyone's response to every uh, to both questions, but hopefully we'll get to hear um, a variety of different answers. So the first question I wanted to pose to the fellows is how do you think meta majors, areas of interest, whatever we may call them, could benefit the student experience? And are there any students who want to start brave students? in this large room. Stephen, go ahead. Okay, so I'm gonna try to be kind because I tend to come from a place of criticism and it is meant productively. Um, but my big takeaway from this is the why. Uh, I'm lacking the why as a student to connect to this. Um, <laughs> it's a saying that I hear my mom say a lot is it, it feels like putting lipstick on a pig that this doesn't actually address equity. It feels more like it's trying to address efficiency. Um, and, and so my disconnect is, is I see how this is helpful for the students that are already engaged, that have an idea of what they want, but those are typically more students who are already succeeding. So how does this framework as a, a structure help those students that we've lost, help those students that are connected to the services, but still don't uh, persist. Um, I have a student that I mentor, that I've been mentoring for the last two years. He's no longer a student at Mesa. He's a young, black, gay, aged out, former foster youth who was in EOPS, DSPS. He worked on campus and he still had to drop out. You know, And for myself as a 30 something, white male who had all the support and benefits, I still am struggling to see how this would have benefited me and my path where I've changed my major several times um, because they weren't grouped. You know, I got in for one major and then it was like, oh, this isn't working. The reasons why it wor isn't working for me is because this entire, what you would call meta major group doesn't work for me. So I would still completely change from one meta major group to another. So I'm, I'm struggling with whether or not this is putting kind of the cart before the horse and whether it is actually addressing student needs and how it helps create an environment that we do address student needs. Um, so that those are just the questions I, I, I've been struggling with. Thank you, Stephen, so much for sharing your ideas and your perspective. And please, as I want to point out to all the fellows there, please be honest. That is why we, we want you here and we want to hear your feedback. So thank you, Stephen, for getting the ball rolling. Uh, Jocelyn, go ahead. I think that with the meta majors, it is helpful, you know, having like what I had like other students because I'm in the vet tech program, but I had a lot like I talked to them. And we all kind of came up with having meta majors is helpful if you already know what you're doing. Um, but also like getting all this information, knowing then after that who to talk to would have really benefited if we had like a dedicated if we are doing meta majors for the like for those majors, like I've attended like an SDSU orientation and all engineering will meet on one day. They'll all meet with like a, a dedicated counselor. Um, and then they'll be able to then talk to those dedicated um, like faculty. They'll be able to um, talk with them with that. So if we are doing like meta majors, I think that would help in a way. But if we did have, I guess also like another concern was that having those would be helpful once you've already finished, I guess the bases and those classes that you need to even get to those higher level classes. So meta majors is great once you know what you're doing. Um, like, I think one of the questions that I had like answered was that um, in my position, when I first started, I had no idea what I wanted to do. So meta majors would have been cool to look at it, but at the level that I was starting, like a basic level English and math, I did not have time to think about that yet because I wasn't there yet. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I lost my way getting there. So when I did finally get there, I had to start all over. 
So I just think having those orientation days um, would have benefited. Yeah, I'm trying to, yeah. So it is, I do like meta majors, but I think it's, we need help way before that, before we get to meta majors. Thank you for that feedback, Jocelyn. Nee, you had some comments. Hi, um, so I think by the definition of meta major is helpful the most for, I think for a dream for a student because by meta major, we can group our degree and certificate together as a group because when I was a dream for a student, I got really confused by our major compared to SDSU major. So for us, we have accounting major, but for them, they don't have accounting major. They have business and admin administration emphasis in accounting. So a lot of my friends got rejected from SDSU because they, on the application, they put accounting major transfer, but SDSU don't have accounting. So you have to put business and admin to transfer if, if I'm not mistaken. But that's what I did and I got accepted because I did the right major that they require. So that why I'm thinking it's good for, I think especially for transfer student if we have the meta major. Thank you so much, Nee, for sharing that. Were there any other of the fellows that had comments regarding the first question? And if not, we can move on to the second question. Okay, so the second question is how could meta majors have benefited your experience navigating community college? And I know that some of you touched on this a bit, um, but if there are others who want to contribute, Alex, Alexander, sorry. Uh, Alex is fine. Um, so I wanted to share um, specifically what happened with my uh, path here because it is very much related to meta majors. Um, so when I first attended Mesa, um, I didn't even know about orientation nor that I attended. Uh, and I'm you're not able to um, meet with a counselor until your second semester. So first semester, I had no idea. And then my second semester, I started in fall of 19. So my second semester was right when the pandemic hit and uh, getting an appointment with the counselor was the last thing on my mind. Um, and by the time I did get one was in my third semester. Uh, and so I guess what I'm trying to say is, I wish that beta majors were a thing when I first applied to the school. And I know we haven't even uh, fully ironed out how we're gonna implement them. Uh, but if they're anywhere near their application process, I think it would be incredibly helpful. Because for me, I knew that I wanted to do computer science going in. Uh, and so I saw an associate's degree that said computer and information science. I thought, oh, hey, that sounds great. It has computer and science in the name. That's probably good for me to transfer. Uh, I picked it out and three semesters in, I was informed, hey, no, this is actually for an MIS degree. Uh, and if you're gonna transfer, you're gonna transfer into a business school. Um, and so if say there was a meta major for like information technology for IT, I could have picked that and then they would have said, okay, do you wanna go into MIS or do you wanna go into proper computer science? And then I would have been aware of the difference. Um, but because of my situation and I learned so late, now I'm pursuing something completely different, which, which is MIS. Uh, because I didn't want to start over and I, it sounds like a good prospect, honestly. Um, so if implementing the meta major specifically within the application process, or at least making it kind of like putting it in the way, not, like not something that can that students can just go around and not learn about, uh, I think would be very helpful. Thank you so much, Alex, for sharing your experience. Are there any of the other fellows who would like to answer that second question? Um, in terms of their own personal experience. Gabriela. Uh, hi, uh, you can call me Gabby. Um, I was just like, that had put some stuff in the chat and I saw that some people um, were talking about it. And one of the things that like um, was the hardest for me was that, you know, as a first generation college student, um, I was kind of coming in with a lot of doubts about like succeeding in this, right? So there's already a lot of things that I'm thinking about before I'm even thinking about what major. Um, I'm going to like 
uh, declare or like what's my career path. I feel like there were some steps before getting to that, like everyone mentioned. Um, but like I was saying in the chat and how other people were talking about it, I think this is something that would be more impactful if it started at like an earlier stage, right? Rather than the summer before your first semester or your first semester or after your first semester. Um, because I think um, if you kind of set the tone for what we're trying to do as a campus, right? Um, it's easier to get your message across. And one of the things is I Mesa has a really, a lot of really good programs when it comes to um, helping students out, right? You have peer navigators, career ambassador, outreach members. I think it'd be useful to, to connect with them and um, have them a kind of like an extension of what we're doing. For example, having outreach mentors who are going out to high schools, start there, start kind of getting it into their heads. Like, hey, you know, this is not just like a linear path. You don't have to do like A, B, C, and D, right? This is, this is about exploration and this and kind of um, they're the first uh, kind of base that they touch with in Mesa. Um, and then you have that summer before they start the first semester to kind of re-emphasize and get a little bit more focused. Um, because I feel like it's a little bit too much, um, you know, just with everything that's going on before they, they start their first semester. Um, and then you can use like peer navigators who are helping the first year students. And then you have career ambassadors that are more with like, you know, what do you want to transfer? Do you want to get a job after this? So I think it'd be a really good job I mean, it'd be a really good way of connecting with these other programs um, to strengthen this message. Wonderful. Thank you, Gabby, for sharing that information. We are running a little bit behind schedule, and I want to make sure that we have plenty of time for our breakout groups. And fellows, do not fret. This will be an opportunity for you to continue to share your experiences within those breakout rooms. Um, but I would also encourage you, if you have additional thoughts about this after the workshop, to reach to Tina or Danny and can forward that feedback to us, um, to the leadership team. So thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, um, honestly, as well, your, your perspectives. And I believe this is going to lead us into a 10 minute break. So because the smooth jazz was so popular, I'm gonna just flood your speakers with a little bit more smooth jazz for the next 10 minutes. We'll plan to gather back here. It's 1019, right around 1030, 1029. Uh, we'll see you back here. And we will start right on time because we are a little bit behind. So um, yes, take your break and we will see you back in 10.
Okay, we're welcoming people back slowly as we're getting close to getting started. Yes, are we ready? <clears throat> okay. So in the interest of time, because we really do want to give you a chance to um, work in your breakout rooms for as long as possible, um, <clears throat> it will be activity time. But before we move into the breakout rooms, um, we would like to show you a couple examples of what um, our uh, colleagues have done um, up and down the state with meta majors, and particularly what that looks like with that internet presence, right? I, we haven't talked enough about um, the internet presence of, of the meta majors. I have dropped in the chat um, the links to what we're going to show you right now so that you can refer to them as you're in your breakout rooms. I've also dropped in the chat a file of what our sister college Miramar did um, with their degrees and certificates and how they organize them um, in their um, pardon me it, it, with their meta majors they call them areas of interest I believe. So um, I'm going to uh, escape this. No, I need to escape it. And we will start with Mount Sac and Marisa. Yeah, I think that Mount Sac provides a very comprehensive and thoughtful approach in terms of um, looking at how guided pathways um, and careers work together. And so as um, Tony is kind of scrolling around, the, these are sorted um, in terms of their career cluster. Um, so for example, like if you click on arts and design or any of those, <laughs> Tony, um, to get a better idea as to um, how these look, this shows some of the um, different programs that they have grouped under the art and design programs, for example. And then when you click, um, on any one of those, which you can if you would like. Basically then from there, you can see the different programs that are offered. So if as a student, you know, um, you know, you have an interest in any of these particular clusters, this enables you to then see what programs are offered and then to do a deeper dive to see the types of degree programs, what courses are required, and then you can also on there, those maps, um, or whatever they may call them, but uh, in order to complete that degree. So I think that Mount Sac is a really good example. Um, and it 
the in their description even they state which is something that i talked about earlier you know consistency clarity for those students in order to achieve their ultimate goals so this is one good example of what what exists out there that may inform sort of the path that that we're looking at moving forward um, and then Miramar's the the document that Tony dropped into the chat a little bit earlier if you don't see it you might want to scroll up in the chat um, but that identifies the various uh, interest areas um, and how they've grouped similarly um, to Mount SAC um, to sort of divide up based on those career related interests is there anything I might have left out team that anyone else wants to add? I think that's good. Um, I, I just want to point out too with Mount SAC is you can, you know, if you know that you're transferring and particularly Mount SAC's transfer institution is Cal Poly Pomona, then, you know, they've really done a comprehensive. Do you want to look at our at our programs this way or do you want to look particularly what transfers to Cal Poly Pomona? So students can really explore, if you will, um, before they even set foot on, on their campus. But let me add that um, we're in the middle, right? It's an intersegmental approach. It was mentioned earlier in the chat how we should align with the high schools. Well, many of the high schools are going this route again. So if you begin to explore that meta major, and I hope it's clearer for those who are not as familiar what exactly a meta major looks like. It's not that you are boxed in here and you can't look around anywhere else or get information. In fact, the, the benefit here is that you have a lot more information all in one spot. And this was campus decided how they would organize things. In addition to that, as you begin to explore, when you look at the maps, whether you move from one degree to another, what you begin to see is that you there are many courses in common and that will be more apparent in the next example and you can start with this major and sh switch to another major still explore exploration is still possible with meta majors nobody is boxed into just one choice and then um make sure that you use those units, that financial aid amount that you have and so forth in a very um, intentional way to achieve your educational goal. Thank you. Okay, so we will go and look at Cabrillo's example, Ian. Yeah, so, so you can see Cabrillo, um, they actually have a much smaller number of, um, I guess, they, what, what do they call them, CAPS? Uh, so they have a much kind of smaller number of these career and academic pathways. And, and I think one of the interesting things about what Cabrillo has done is the organization is really based on kind of shared major prep. Uh, so it's sort of kind of behind the scenes. That's not really necessarily kind of directly uh, 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 made clear or because it doesn't really need to be to the students. But the idea is these different clusters are organized around kind of the same Sort of levels of courses. So within these particular structures, it's much easier to kind of move around from the majors because there's a lot of the kind of the shared major prep. And so if you kind of change majors within a particular cluster, you're not going to um, end up having to kind of take a lot of time and repeat a bunch of courses or take a bunch of new courses. So um, you can see it's also organized around kind of, um, you know, we, we talked about uh, the kind of role of sort of passion and interest students expressing that that's a kind of a major focus for how they're selecting um, courses. And so you can see they've, they've really kind of incorporated that into the way that they're presenting this information so that students, hey, you know, I see myself in this. So maybe that's a direction that I should pursue. And if, if you could uh, kind of drill down a little bit further into one of them, um, Tony, it doesn't really matter which one. Yeah, oh yeah, so yeah. Uh, so if you're talking about like the global and human studies, you can see there's, you know, the different um, programs they have. You say click on philosophy. I think that takes you to uh, a map. No, maybe it doesn't. Oh, yeah. So there's just kind of description. And then you can see on the left, there's this sort of basic information there that takes you to the uh, to the map. Um, and, and so, again, you can see that that's the sort of principle of organization that uh, uh, Cabrillo College has used to present this to the students. And you guys, you know, you have the link so you can kind of 
explore that further if you'd like during the uh, during the breakout sessions. Can I interject here? Oh, please. I know Cabrillo a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things to highlight is you, you can look through a million examples of these, including our own Miramar, right? And one of the things you will begin to notice, and I think this is a concern that perhaps didn't uh, surface before, is that you know, most of the groupings tend to be along traditional lines, like STEM still ends up being STEM. Now, there is a, a good comment on the chat that I wanted to address that says, well, not all STEM majors should be uh, grouped together. And, and that perhaps is true. And in fact, what Cabrillo did by looking at major prep is you may have within a, a discipline a variety of degrees. Some degrees would follow, let's say in biology, the allied health track. So that degree could be in the allied health, whatever we call it, uh, uh, meta major, not necessarily in the STEM. So it really is not just a broad thing. We could use whatever criteria and whatever we, and there's a lot to learn from others who have done this way before us, right? Of how the specifics are going to work. It could be a degree because degrees fit within disciplines. You have a variety of degrees. Psychology is a perfect example of that as well. Thanks. Thank you, Isabel. And then the last example that we wanted to show you was um, our neighbors to the north, Mira Costa. And uh, they call theirs academic and career pathways. So a lot of, I mean, different ways, but kind of um, similar, similar um, headings, if you will, or names for meta majors um, instead of meta majors. In fact, I don't know one school that actually calls it that. I think that was just how to get the idea out there. Um, Mira Costa kind of did a combination of major prep and career areas, and they that's evident in their um, description here of the or their academic and career pathways. Um, you know, just the first sentence are collections of majors with related courses that fit within a career area. So um, you know, they have six. Um, they didn't call their STEM; they called it math and sciences um, as well. But notice business and technology, and that's what made sense for them. Um, so again, always coming back to what makes sense for Mesa without having to completely reinvent um, the wheel or the whole car for that matter. Um, so I'll go ahead and click on business and technology. That takes you to, um, you know, are you interested in careers that do this, right? I like the way Cabrillo was very like, are you this type? Is this what you're interested in? Is this what you're interested in? Um, things like that. Here's careers in business and technology um, that you may be uh, interested in. Okay, and then you can go to their degrees and certificates that are within the business and technology meta major. So they have business and technology, accounting, automotive technology, business administration, computer studies and information technology. They have videos, career options, student voices, and then the maps, the different maps for which students can get. Okay, so a lot of different ways that um, we can put these together, a lot of different ways that we can present them on our website. And certainly I see the chat is just going crazy with, you know, then how do we create the community aspect um, and, and move forward with these ideas of, of meta majors. So I did drop those in there again, you can explore through if you would like to. Is this my, yeah, we're not on next steps, we're here. <clears throat> so time for you to get to work. Um, we will have breakout rooms. So a couple of things with the breakout rooms. Um, each room will have a facilitator and I hope facilitators, you know who you are <laughs> um, or they should know who you are. Um, first and foremost, choose someone that's not the facilitator so that the facilitator can actually facilitate the conversation. Choose someone to be a recorder, if you will. You will be recording your answers on Google Slides. And um, Marisa, can you drop the link to the Google Slides, please, in the chat? Um, last time at the retreat, we did this Google Slides activity. It was very, very successful, um, except some of, I, I know some people were like, ah, I, I couldn't get everything on one slide. You don't have to. You can move to another slide. You can create a new slide if you wish, um, just like you would create a slide in a PowerPoint, be on your slide and then hit enter and just a new slide will pop up. So if you need to use multiple slides to get all your information in, you can. 
We originally had 45 minutes slated for this. That would take us to the end. It's looking more like 40-ish. Um, but we do want to make sure that you um, have time to, um, to really work through these slides. So what's on the slides is six questions that you're going to be answering. So they're guided questions. It's a guided discussion. And based on everything you've heard today, which is a lot, I understand that. But based on everything you've heard, answer those questions as a group as best that you can. Um, and really, we really want your ideas um, recorded so that we can move forward with, with um, what this looks like for Mesa particularly. Um, did we get the link in there? I can't find it. I guess I can just type it in there. I know I've lost it too, Marisa, sorry. Um, everybody can see it there, right? I'll just type it in, HTTP. Okay, there it is. Um, so I am actually going to, I'm gonna click out of this. So the slides look like this. That's my view, okay, you guys are popping in. So once you pick, wait until we go in the breakout room because you're gonna choose a recorder and I don't know if the limit's gonna come up on this, but you can at least see what start seeing what the questions are. You will be invited to um, a room now. Okay, you should all be invited to a room. Hopefully a room popped up. Do we lose you, Larry? <laughs> I didn't think we needed to record me just sitting and watching the time. So I didn't <laughs> record that. Welcome back. Oh, this is so much better seeing everybody's face than hiding in the corner. Um, is every, I think everybody's back. Um, <clears throat> so I just, we only have like 10 minutes and I wanna give Ian his time um, to show everyone the next steps. I just wanted to unfortunately share my screen again. Um, well, fortunately, unfortunately. So, sorry, here is, ah, sorry about that. Here is all your brilliant work. This is what I was watching. My goodness, so much stuff for us to go through. Um, but I really was watching 
a lot of things go by. Um, I was also watching a lot of references to, um, to other examples other than the ones that we saw. So I just wanted to point something out if I can very quickly. On this slide was another example. These two on the left is Bakersfield and on the right is Sierra College. I saw a lot of in the slides, a lot of you um, referring to those two colleges as well. So what we showed you the three and then the Miramar file is just, I mean, there's 116 California community colleges, right? There's actually other examples outside of the state, city of colleges, Chicago is a great one. Um, so if you, if you wanna look at more, but one of the other things I wanted to point out, and, and this is totally personal, and because I didn't get to be in a breakout room, I guess I get to put my say here for a second. Sierra is one of my favorites, and the reason I like Sierra is, is because the names make sense, and it's not, and I think they, they're simple. So instead of using social and behavioral sciences, let's say, or, or even STEM, and people might not know, they really spell it out, and they have people, culture, and society, right? visual and performing arts, earth and the environment. It, it just seems the, the language is just not the um, usual academia language that we're used to. And so I just wanted to point out that there are some other examples, but I am going to- Tony, I'm gonna to be uh, uh, just stepping in a couple of seconds. A couple of things that people asked uh, through text is uh, when we talk about major prep, how would we do that? Actually, let me highlight that uh, Shelly Hess, our Dean of Instruction at the district office, already has done an amazing job and chairs have seen it, deans have seen it, uh, and analyzing the major prep, you know, where courses fit. And also the RP group, as Bridget pointed out, has done some work to that effect as well. So um, anyway, a, a, another thing I wanna highlight before we let Ian talk, is uh, that this is the beginning of the process. We are going to name and we are going to decide. Many colleges like Sierra, like Cabrillo have done a lot of, once we have all this conversation and we have those mixers that Ian will describe, then we're gonna have campus input as to how many meta majors we have, what the grouping will be and what are they going to be called. So more to come, Ian. Thank you. Um, if you could advance the slide, please. Uh, so this is the kind of the, the timeline going forward uh, for the remainder of the semester. Um, and, and I think one, one thing I really wanted to kind of highlight was uh, we're going to have a series of um, mixers to, uh, this is again what we had today, this is really the beginning of the conversation and we want to kind of continue this conversation and, and, and sort of refine these ideas that people have come up with. And so I, I, we've, we've put together this list of uh, mixers through the uh, second half of February and, and the month of March. Uh, I, I tried to schedule them at different times to try and capture as many different uh, schedules as possible. And um, we really would like you to kind of come participate in these. They'll be an hour and a half each. Um, and, and there will be uh, some compensation for participation. The, the exact details of that compensation are still being worked out, but um, you know, we, we there is a lot of work to be done here and, and we will have, um, uh, uh, you know, we do wanna kind of uh, reward you for, for that work. So I just really wanted to kind of put in a plug for uh, those, we're gonna call them Mesa Mixers, Meta Major Explorations. We're really gonna kind of continue the conversation that has been started today. Uh, the goal there then is to try and come up with a framework by uh, kind of the end of March, beginning of April. Uh, we'll be uh, presenting that framework to the campus community during the month of April, refining it, getting feedback. Um, and, and we may actually end up with, with maybe a couple of options. And, and, and by April 21st, we would like to have the campus vote on which approach uh, we want to go with. Uh, we'll then again, like I said, refine that approach uh, at the end of April, beginning of May. Uh, but, but the idea is to have a framework in place by uh, the end of the spring semester. So, so it is a, a kind of an ambitious uh, task, but I think uh, we're in a good position to do it but we really need your input. We need your voice. We need to know what you guys want 
uh, be, because this is supposed to be a process that is reflective of the entire campus community. So those are really kind of the next steps going forward. You can see the timeline there and you'll be getting lots of emails plugging uh, the various mixers uh, as we move uh, forward into the semester. So that's kind of where we're headed. Those are the next steps. And uh, yeah, that's, that's that's it on my, for me. I, um, Ian, if I could as um, yes. just also emphasize, I think um, there's a lot of, um, in, um, uh, in the chat, um, group thinking about having students also um, be part of the conversation and testing some of the groupings and do a beta test like Waverly had mentioned. And I said, yes, I agreed. I think we had also talked about that in our work group to have that um, done. So I just want to point that out. Too. Yeah, that's good. And that is what most colleges do as well. The student input is gathered in terms of naming, um, formation of meta majors, et cetera. Um, anything else um, from the panelists? Well, I just have to say that I was a skeptic uh, when we started that we could get all this work done in two and a half hours, but time has proven me wrong, which is great. I appreciate everybody's input. This is an important one. And uh, the engagement, the conversations, now as Ian outlined for us, the task is, is big ahead, but we have a good plan with everybody's input. And I'm looking forward to that May 18th day when we get this project finalized. So thank you again. And uh, we will be uh, presenting to all of you in many venues, what we learned, how we move forward and attend those mixers. Have a great semester, everybody. Bye. Thank you all. Why is it so satisfying to watch all those windows close down to just the last couple? <laughs> I just, I always stick around to see it because it's like, hee 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 Especially when you're the host, right? <laughs> it's like the people leaving the party or something like that. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you all. Great job, Tony. Great job, Risa. Hi, hi. Good to see you, Rina. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for jumping in as facilitators, by the way, because I didn't have enough for the rooms and I didn't want the rooms to be huge. And I was like, who's here that can facilitate? So <laughs> Stacey, thank you so much for chiming, for jumping in there. Thank you. Yeah, well, we we're happy to. And um, we had some pretty good discussions. Or uh, I think we're still recording, though. <laughs>